using Mac in Windows inside of Linux. Uh, this is something that often gets talked about, uh, or maybe it doesn't get often talked about, but it should be, because we should be using the right tool for the right job. No operating systems is the best out there. I don't care uh, what any fanboy tells you. I think Mac should be used for video editing. I love Final Cut Pro. I've tried every single video editor out there, and this is what works great for me. You might be a little different. Maybe you're Premiere, maybe you're uh, DaVinci Resolve. Uh, everybody's a little different. Or maybe you're a Windows person, and I have a w workspace dedicated it. Uh, for Windows, usually I'm using a GeForce Experience, like game streaming to stream this, uh, which I'll go into here in a second, but a lot of times I'm just pulling this up to launch let's say a Steam game, if I want to come in here and play Destiny 2 or something like that, I can do that. Or maybe I needed to play Warzone. I have that loaded up here too. These games don't play well in like a Linux, <laughs> definitely not in Mac. And uh, yeah, that's what I use for these. But let's talk about how I do this. This is one thing that's often asked. Um, and when it comes to Windows, a lot of times when I want a game, I just use Moonlight Game Streaming, and I have a dedicated box with Windows. Now, obviously, this isn't for everybody, as it does require a box dedicated for Windows. But the big thing here is I can take this, and I could be on a Chromebook. I could be on a Raspberry Pi. I could be on any laptop, and I could stream my games wherever I'm at, any game, and all my games would be up to date. So if you have a whole bunch of computers and you're loading a ton of different stuff on each one, well, this is probably for you because Moonlight connects right into my game stream PC and that game stream PC uses NVIDIA. If you're an AMD user though, there's another open source project. Again, Moonlight's free, it's open source. Uh, Sunshine is actually a Moonlight host. So you could, do this for the, you AMD users out there to basically install on your Windows PC and then stream it to your Linux box like I'm doing with uh, Moonlight, which I always put in Workspace 2 here. And just to kind of show this, I could actually just hit play and uh, launch into like say Diablo 2. And here is my gameplay right, right there. <laughs> All of this I can play directly off of here and I actually have a pretty good time. Let me take the audio down a bit so I don't have any reverb and I'm just gonna take it down to zero, apply that, hit play, and we'll just select hell difficulty. And this is how I play if I'm laying up in bed, I'll be playing on my laptop. If I'm here in the studio and I wanna play, I just load it up and I hit play. All of these things work so darn well. Or if if you have some other thing, if it was like a MacBook and I had that, I could just play that with Moonlight. Or maybe I wanted to set up a Raspberry Pi on a TV. I could do that. All these are great. You get full 60 frames per second and I don't have any issues streaming it. Uh, so that's pretty darn powerful if you ask me. But it doesn't stop there. Let's say I'm in game and I'm like, okay, I wanna come back into my Linux box. Uh, maybe I need to make a thumbnail. I'm like, oh wait, I'll just pause the game, come back to here, uh, make my thumbnail, and then I just jump right back into game, just like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's pretty powerful. You don't have nearly the jostling that you have. Like, let's say if I was only using Windows, you'd have this, you know, minimize effect or some uh, flipping back and forth with like alt tab. Uh, it's not a great experience. This is considerably superior in speed, productivity. Uh, obviously, when I'm making <laughs> that, I could easily go into video editing too. But this is how I do my game streaming through these two functions. Now, as far as my Mac goes over here, this is using Parsec. Now, Parsec is a paid product. or They have a free version, which I'm using right now, uh, but I might upgrade if I ever you know, f finished upgrading my monitors. My monitors are, I would say, throwaways. I, you know, one of those old 1080p 60 hertz monitors. I need to probably upgrade them and get better like color clarity. And <laughs> that way when I'm editing or doing uh, color corrections, I can do that. But this is just as good of an experience. I can scrub really well. Uh, if I wanted to like, just take this and say, hey, okay, let's do a blade cut with the transition. And oh, no, it's just, it's... yeah, I, I, I can do that. That, that works just fine. Um, and then I just undid it. A and yeah, 
it's as if I'm literally on a Mac video editing. And how I set this up on this one, uh, if you want to do this, I would say just buy the absolute cheapest one. How I like to do my editing is all through just the base level Mac Mini. A lot of this stuff was just recycled hardware. Uh, and for this, I'll hit about this map. You see it's just an M1 Mac Mini from 2020. 8 gigs of memory, uh, whatever the base disk space, I think it's like 200 gigs or something. I, I, I just don't even bother with that. I don't care. I, I just stream um, all my video edits from my Synology box. I'll see if I can't link up to a different video from uh, when I actually set that up because this is extremely powerful. If you're a Final Cut user, don't feel like you need to go buy a whole bunch of MacBook Pros and, you know, have those laying around everywhere. Just use what you got. I got a Chromebook in the other room that's, you know, <laughs> they're pretty cheap. And I could just edit just like I do here on my Chromebook. Or maybe if I want to do a $40 Raspberry Pi on my big TV, guess what? I can just hook it up and I could be editing stuff on like a 60 inch TV inside if I wanted to using a Raspberry Pi. That's kind of ridiculous. And guess what? The performance would actually be good. Uh, and that's that's the cool thing about all this. You're no longer relying on having multiple systems for multiple things. Now you can take the best of all the worlds. I can take the best of the productivity in Linux here. I can take the best of gaming in, in my Windows box, and then I don't have to worry about all the headaches, whether it's updates and all that. Yes, I still have to maintain that box, but when you're just using it for gaming, it's not nearly as bad. And then for Parsec in Mac, I use this setup. I will say the Mac setup for Parsec is a little bit different because in uh, system preferences, you have to go to like security and privacy. And usually you need to enable, I think like remote screen and maybe some files and folders. Um, let's see what else we have in here. I think it was screen recording. Yeah, I tried no machine a little bit as well. Uh, I didn't find it to be very good compared to Parsec. Parsec was just a far superior product. Uh, at the end of the day, trying both Parsec gave me almost no issues. And the issues I did get were mainly just permission based in security privacy. But after ironing all that out, uh, and let's say I need to map my audio was the biggest thing with no machine I couldn't get working. So I tried Parsec with this and that's really easy to do. So if I was inside on like my Chromebook, let's say, or if I was inside on like one of my Linux laptops, I could just come into sound and then I could just switch this from a USB overhead uh, to Parsec audio capture and it would pipe all that audio inside. So as I'm scrubbing my videos, it would play as if I'm sitting at a Mac. Uh, so instead of spending $3,000 on a Mac laptop, I can just use my my older laptops or maybe the, the Linux laptops that I actually enjoy better than a MacBook Pro. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's kind of where I'm at with this structure. And it's not that to say, hey, this is better than the other. It's just to figure out which task assigns better or, or, or is more effective, more productive, just yields a better product at the end of the day. Uh, and then using that operating system for it. And then at the end, you can just switch to whatever you want. I wanted to give you options. That's the big thing here is have fun, give you options. Don't feel like you're pigeonholed and go, oh, I have to use Windows because I'm a gamer. I have to use Mac because I'm a creative type and I have to have, to have Final Cut Pro. Uh, these things kind of free you. So then you can use a Linux full-time if you wanted and then utilize these different systems. Now, obviously, if you only have one computer, this isn't for you. But a lot of people out there have multiple computers and they just need to reallocate them. And this is how I did mine to where I, I don't need to buy a bunch of stuff. I know some folks that are just buying like MacBooks just for video editing. And I'm like, oh, that's bonkers to me. Uh, so hopefully this helps you guys. Use the right tool for the right job. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section, and I'll see you in the next one.